well, uh, these are some interesting times. And, uh, you know, this is the, the type of thing that's being predicted for several years now. I remember I attended an online immune defense symposium two years ago, and they talked about the pandemics that are coming in the 21st century. Uh, new viruses, new strains of viruses that we've never seen before. Uh, new forms of superbug bacteria, you know, these infectious bacteria that are completely drug resistant. The bottom line is the prediction is that by the year 2050, more people will die from infectious disease than from cancer. And of course, the good news in, in relation to all that bad news is there is one thing that you can do, though, to defend yourself against all of that, and that is the power of the human body. It's immune system to fight infectious disease. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about viruses today, because that obviously is at the very top of the list of, of what everybody's concerned about at this very moment. He talks about how viruses affect the human body. There's three different things that will happen. Number one, an infected person will be asymptomatic. In other words, the virus will come, the body will defeat it, and the person will never know they had it. Now, they may spread it uh, because it is spread through coughing, touching, things like that, uh, but they will be asymptomatic and never know that they even had it. Number two, you will, uh, you will express symptoms of a viral infection like a flu. And you might have a fever, you might get stiff, you might have a runny nose, you might have pain, you'll be lethargic, of course, sleepy. Uh, and that is a degree of infection that some people will express. And then the third group are those that get secondary infections as a result of the virus itself. And that might express itself like pneumonia, uh, or some other infection that obviously can be fatal. And these things can shut down your organs uh, and uh, be lethal. So what is the difference? How, how, do you, how does one person become asymptomatic and the other person die? It's in direct relation to the effectiveness of your immune system and its ability to naturally fight that virus. So everybody has an immune system, but in the 21st century, everybody's immune system is to some degree compromised. And that's because of the world that we live in. So the main things that cause immune deficiency uh, in the human body are things like uh, malnutrition or a lack of proper nutrition or uh, toxicity or uh, exposure to poor sanitation. Uh, the number one reason that people are toxic in the world today is pharmaceutical drugs. I mean, 60% of the people in this country live with one or more chronic diseases and over 70% of the people are taking some level of pharmaceutical intervention every day. Well, that's the number one reason for toxicity in the human body. Uh, and then finally, levels of stress. And of course, we live in a stressful environment. So what is the advice that we get today in terms of reducing your risk of not only uh, contracting a virus, but it expressing itself in a negative way? Well, almost everything uh, that we've been told is prevention. Uh, from a standpoint of reducing your risk of exposure. So things like wash your hands, things like don't go to crowded places, uh, things like don't touch your face, and for some reason, buy a lot of toilet paper. I'm not sure where that one came in, but that's certainly one of the things that people are doing a lot of. But none of those things have anything to do really with enhancing your body's immune function and defense against viruses. So how does that work? Well, here's what a virus is. It's a particle. It enters the body and it can't live on its own. It has to have a host. 
So it's looking for a host, right? It's looking for something, uh, a, a cell to live in. So it has a docking device. So it gets into your respiratory system and it docks to one of your respiratory cells in your lungs. Uh, and then its next goal is to penetrate that cell. Once it penetrates the cell, then it enters the cell. It has its own DNA and it turns that cell from a healthy cell into a virus replicating factory. So it, it releases its DNA and all of a sudden that cell starts replicating viruses instead of healthy cells. Okay, so now those little viruses are then re-released from that cell into the system and that's how you start building a viral load. It's not because you get exposed to more external, it's because internally you're, you become a virus manufacturer. And so that's what happens to a virus and its goal is to live. Its goal is to hide itself from the immune system. So what is the immune system's goal? The immune system's goal is to identify that virus and kill it. So another way that the immune system stops a viral infection is it sees those cells, develops antibodies that attach to those cells, just like cancer cells. And uh, then the immune system knows exactly what to do to attack and kill one of those little virus producing factories. And so that's called normal human physiology, guys. It's free. It exists in every one of our bodies and it's how our immune systems function. The problem is we live in a world where we all have some level of immune system suppression. So how do you activate the immune system? The best technology in the world for doing that, guys, is called ACE Manin. There's nothing out there that has ever shown the ability to activate the immune system's ability to reduce the risk of adhesion, penetration, and replication of a virus. And uh, so when you read studies on uh, ACE man and you'll see the words antiviral or antibacterial or antifungal, ACE man in itself does not fight a virus. ACE man and activates the immune system's ability to identify and kill viruses or drug resistant forms of bacteria or fungus or cancer cells or aberrant cells of any type, any type of a molecule that comes into the body that is not needed and can cause disease, the immune system is programmed to identify it, kill it, get it out of the body. So how do we enhance our immune system's ability to live in this 21st century? The intervention of ACE Manning is the best way, without a doubt. So Carrington did over $100 million worth of research and published over 30 peer-reviewed studies on the specific intervention of ACE Manning in reducing the effect of viruses and viral infections. So man, there is a pile of studies out there. So don't confuse this with an immune booster. What you're gonna see in the marketplace is a lot of companies say immune booster. What boosts the immune system? Well, any nutrient will. I mean, immune deficiency is a, is a response to you know, malnutrition. So anytime you enhance your immune, your, your, uh, vitamin mineral intake, you're obviously going to help your immune system. That's different than an immune activator. That's different than Ace Manning's role of turning on the immune system's ability, put it in on high alert to identify these aberrant cells, these cells that have been affected by viruses or bacterium or cancer or whatever, and effectively fighting those cells. So there's no better molecule in nature or in medicine that enhances the body's ability to recognize and inhibit the proliferation of viruses in your body. There just isn't any. And there's no amount of research from any other ingredient that even supports that. So ACE Manning is not a drug. If you put ACE Manning in a Petri dish with a virus, it doesn't kill it. It turns on the immune system's ability to do that. And it does it more 
effectively and efficaciously than any other molecule in nature. So guys, there is uh, a need and a very acute awareness in the marketplace for what can we do. And when you hear the news, they always say the people with weakened immune systems or the elderly or those with pre-existing conditions are most susceptible to having a bad response to this virus. Well, all of those people have weakened immune systems. So what is the response to that? You better find a way to increase your immune system's capability of dealing with these 21st century bugs and viruses. And so the timing could not be better for what we're doing. And here's the great news. The more people that get educated and understand the value of what we bring them and their, their quality of life impact, the more kids we get to provide this same exact technology to. You know, in the world uh, where we meet on the front line with these children with compromised immune systems around the world, these are places that have no access to medicine or doctors. Turning on a child's immune system is the difference between life and death in these developed nations of the world, developing nations. It's turning out it's the same thing in developed nations. When things like superbugs and viruses come along, a good functioning immune system can be the difference between life and death. It can be the difference between quality of life impact. And we have the best technology to do that with. So anyway, thanks for allowing me to share that. Hope that wasn't too scientific. Uh, but it's good to know that there's a scientific basis for the value that we are bringing society today. And it couldn't be a better time to go out and champion our cause.